How's it going guys? The BPL has ended and Team Dragon managed to barely edge us out on Team Unicorn by 50 points. Um, really come down, came down to them completing an extra set. Probably this Blight set that we were not able to finish because we could not get these cowls to drop. But that pretty much is what it came down to. We completed just about everything else possible. But yeah, we wound up not taking home first place in the BPL. But main point of this video is I want to showcase my build, give you a build guide on it. Um, I'm playing Cold Dot Occultist. This is my favorite build in the game. Um, has been since like Betrayal League. And I've played this build a lot. I've made lots of videos on this build. First time I played Occultist instead of Raider in quite a while. And yeah, I'll throw this map in and see what things are looking like. Um, my Atlas Passive Tree is kind of in a strange spot. It's got Expedition and then nothing else but map drops. So not much going on in my maps because trying to get the last little stuff for BPL. But what we have going on here is I have Cold Snap, I have Vortex, I've got Creeping Frost, I've got Frost Blink, and then I have Bane that applies three curses. And then I'm running Blasphemy and Feeble to help bolster some defenses. And then currently I'm running Clarity, Hatred, and Malevolence. Now it... I'm running Hatred because I, it really doesn't matter at this point if I survive. Now, normally I'd probably be running Grace in place of Hatred, but Hatred gives me increased damage, and I got a Hatred implicit on my chest. I also got an All's Uprising that is giving me malevolence having no mana reservation, so this really kind of helps things along. And then I switched to a staff that I alt spam till I hit plus three cold spell skill gems, and then we multi modded with spell damage and cold dot. And yeah, this, this at this point can pretty much do anything in the game. And then on my weapon swap, I have a Synvectus Metal. So I'm gonna kill something with the Synvectus Metal, and then weapon swap back. And now I have Rampage, um, something that a cultist does not quite have over a lot of the other classes, is movement speed uh, i played a lot of cold dot raider raider has lots of speed so you don't have to worry as much about it but if you're running rampage you're slowly going to build speed throughout the map and then the reason i'm running i blasphemy aura is that these enemies are always going to be cursed and i have a chance to explode cursed enemies dealing a percentage of their life as chaos damage so this allows me to like pop a Vol Cold Snap and just run through enemies. And since I'm cursing within Feeble, I'm able to explode those enemies. Now, if I want to min max damage, I could be running one of my other curses on the Blasphemy instead, have a, like a punishment for a fourth damage curse, which isn't super necessary. The Enfeeble works really well, but you can see I'm just ripping this map apart. And then we have the boss here, and then we hit it with the Creeping Frost, Cold Snap, Vortex, Vol Cold Snap, and then we curse, applying Despair, Elemental Weakness, and Frostbite, and the boss just melts. Now there's a lot that can be done to improve the damage of this character, but at the stage that it's at, it's handling everything fairly well. Some extra stuff here, and yeah, this has beyond throughout the whole map but i love being able to pop all cold snap and just run through things it's a it's a lot like plague Vare, um how a lot of people will be running poisonous concoction with the plague bear on a cultist to get the um profane bloom explosions that way the, it performs about the same way, way you just can build it a little bit differently you get to use a weapon and things like that to really help you along so it's 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 a lot different than the poisonous concoction build is, but pretty much functions the same. There we go. There's pretty solid map clear. I didn't really do bosses on this build, um, though I'm sure I could. Well, let's let's throw up mastermind here. Let's do a 83 mastermind. See how that goes. Just looking at the boss damage in its current state. So there's lots of like way these things work. I have my Vol Vortex and Vol Cold Snap both in my chest, 
both five linked with control destruction, elemental focus, hypothermia, and inspiration. Inspiration is mainly to lower the mana cost of the skills because once the levels of the gems start getting super high, it gets pretty costly to use all of the skills. And there we go. The first wave of Katarina is down. Cruise through here with the Vokold snap and wreck things. But yeah, this inspiration could be placed with an, replaced with an Empower. Um, helmet could be replaced with the Rhyme Gaze. Gives you some Cold Dot Multi. Um, over here in my staff, I do have it 6 length. This is for both Frost Blink and Creeping Frost. That is applying Unbound Ailments, Bone Chill, Arcane Surge, and Onslaught. So, if I happen to kill something or hit like a rare unique enemy with my Frost Blink or Creeping Frost, it will give me Onslaught, which is just a little bit of extra speed, which is always nice on an Occultist. And I'm not running a flask to give me onslaught but yeah just being able to run through enemies like this and they just explode it, it's fantastic and it, it is possible to get a level 21 of all cold snap as well to further boost the damage of that but in my experience playing this build it's always better like for overall damage to i've, I've never found a way to separate the Vortex and the Cold Snap from the chest. Um, having them both 5-linked gives you the Cold Snap, Vortex, and Vault Cold Snap all 5-linked together in a single 6-link. And then you can do the same with the dual 5-link for Creeping Frost and Frost Blink. Over here, we're trying to maximize effect of chill. So that's why the Unbound Ailments... And a lot of the quality on these is going to give you like chill duration, but we don't need chill duration because like we'd be scaling the duration of the ground effects on these so we really just need chill effect the more chill effect we have the more creeping frost and frost blink amplifies the cold snap and vortex damage yeah creeping frost make sure we have arcane surge up and here we go with the mastermind i believe a lot of the bosses in this game have reduced curse effects but insta phase the first part here goes Janus, and this fight takes a while. But yeah, once you stack all of the things up, the damage gets pretty crazy. There is the possibility of getting like a plus five staff if you get the plus two spell gems. And then yeah, there's the empower. You could throw on a carcass jack instead for extra like AoE, which also scales the AoE of the corpse explosions from Profane Blue. Like, th there's just so much here, and it's really easy to set up. There's nothing super special that you need. The big thing is just getting a level 21 Vortex, which took me four sets of level 21 gems to get. Or level 20 gems. It was not kind to me on the corrupts on this iteration of the build. And then we got a Steel Skin. We have Enduring Cry to just get a little bit of extra help on survivability because then feeble can't cover everything and feeble is a really strong gym and since i'm doing so much like scaling of curse effect it really helps a lot you're not really like forced into running grace or determination for your defenses like you are in a lot of other builds because you can juice and feeble so much But yeah, like this totem just hitting me there, like Enfeeble doesn't affect this. So like um, on death effects and stuff like that, you really can't 100% rely on the Enfeeble to keep you alive. And I was running Grace all the way up to level 98 on this character instead of Hatred. So I was just like not getting hit by stuff. What's going on here? Oh, I need to break this. Run through here, blow all these up. With Frost Plink, you can actually touch these and get away from them. Really nice. I really love Frost Plink. It's my favorite movement skill in the game. Alright, last round. But yeah, those little skeletons right there that explode, most of the time you run into those. They are they're gonna do a lot of damage to you. Frost Plink can save you there though. 
Dodge that. Still no Vault Cold Snap up. I haven't no awakened gyms or anything. Just the just the bare minimum here. Dodge that slam. And there goes Katarina. And I got a shield. All right, so let's look at passive tree now. Oh, that's the that's passive. So starting off on an occultist, I wound up leveling Stormbrand until I could get into the cold dot. Because you can't get Cold Snap to level 16 and Vortex at level 28. So there's there's a lot of ways that you can build this character um, around your playstyle. There's a lot you could do with Cluster Jewels and whatnot. I pretty much built this into like almost the exact setup I used on a Raider. Pushing all the way down here to the Ranger skill tree. Which is nice because there is option for extra cold damage and stuff down here. Um, but... I wound up not using that because I was trying to keep my character alive for a long time. But now due to the increased effect of all of the spell suppression nodes, it was fairly easy to get spell suppression capped through all of these nodes here. Even grabbing quick step for some extra movement speed since I'm not guaranteed on the onslaught being up or the rampage. And then I got a couple of extra frenzy charges here. Uh, we got some jewels in here, just some extra life spell damage. This one's got life area damage, so nothing super amazing. Um, if you wanted to play this yourself, there is still quite a bit of room this could grow. But the goal here was to kind of push over to the right side of the tree and get up here. We can get an additional curse. And then you get this, like, you have easy access to a bunch of extra res here. Strength and dexterity here is really nice. You get area damage and area of effect across these nodes. Kind of your best source of damage early when you're trying to push over to the right side. Um, down here you get increased effect of non-damaging ailments, extra chill effect. You get some extra damage here and here's a little bit of extra spell suppression. This is all dot multi here. Um, you can get damage over time multiplier if you killed recently. Here enemies you chill have minus five to resistances you could get exposure effect here if you need the all res um, extra chance for spell suppression there come up here get an additional curse mana reservation efficiency of curse skills that allows me to have less mana reservation on the enfeeble now it would have been really nice to get mana reservation efficiency here and then also push over to charisma because there's a lot of mana reservation efficiency here but it was still not enough to get both malevolence and hatred in the build with a curse aura with a normal amulet here so i was running this amulet here for the longest time and like it just wasn't there losing the mastery that gave us mana reservation efficiency like it's just not here without a really nice helm enchant or cluster jewels to really get the mana reservation efficiency to make like to optimize your build fully uh, I'm still not the biggest fan of that mastery being removed there. Anything else worth mentioning here? Yeah, this I just have for some extra resistances. Because I was really kind of fine-tuning things and making sure I had high chaos res. That's really what it comes down to most of the times when you're trying to push above level 95. It's whether or not you have chaos res. Um, here I wound up getting this... Mana Mastery for Clarity Mana Reservation Efficiency because my big source of being able to sustain the mana cost of these skills is by running Clarity. So getting this here gives me Mana Recovery on Kill, um, Mana Reservation Efficiency without this. Mana drops to 155. It doesn't give me a lot of room to cast things and it's possible you can see i'm running out of mana to always be able to cast those skills so that's why i went ahead and grabbed this mastery here now ideally you would not like want to be using this maybe you're you're running the clarity when you have empower and stuff but i'm running inspiration and i still needed clarity because i i i didn't help alira to get the all res and flat mana uh, recovery there so i wound up needing just a little bit of extra mana sustain in the build and i also have another like minus seven total mana cost since so many of your skills are like instant cast like the frost blink and the vortex like you can really 
you like spamming and if I have onslaught up, you can really still drain the mana. Just not enough. I also tried to use like a divine blessing to run my malevolence for a while, but you need like 600 mana on reserve to be able to use that. So like, I, I just, I didn't understand like why it was quite so expensive. I felt like having this amount of mana, like if it was in the, like three or 400 range, maybe there was some way to squeeze that in and get an extra aura through divine blessing, but it costs in 600, like it's really not easy to get that amount of mana. Further on with defenses, I have Ghost Stance. Since I was stacking Evasion for the longest time, this works better when I'm running Grace instead of Hatred. Grace also has some mana reservation efficiency you can take from right here or right here. So it's a little bit easier to fit in than the Hatred. But when I'm running Grace, I have defensively 58% chance to evade attacks without Grace on drops to 2,000, so I don't have as much evasion, so it really doesn't work as well to use Ghost Dance unless you have that evasion, um, because 3% of your evasion rating is recovered as energy shield when you're hit with Ghost Dance, so this is really like playing into my um, almost 1,000 ES I have on top of my life here, it was like most of my gear is evasion ES, so that I could get that ES pool for the Ghost Dance Keystone here. So this, like, when you have a lot of evasion, you're not going to get hit as often by attacks. And when you do, you're going to recover all that ES. So you're not going to get one shot as much. And with Enfeeble, Enfeeble also lowers the accuracy of nearby enemies while they also deal less damage. And I'm boosting the curse effect a lot on that. So this really... Uh, helps when you're running an evasion build because you're lowering enemies accuracy as well so you're not going to get hit super super often with the setup especially when you're running grace um when you get to the point where it's like okay if i if i get hit and die it's fine that that's when you throw in hatred instead of grace anything else i need to go over here like most of my gears just life resistances nothing super special Get a little bit of avoid ailments here i don't think i'm a hundred percent on the ailment avoid shock avoids 90 percent ignite avoid is 70 percent so it's not quite there but it's part of the reason i pushed all the way down here so i'm, I'm 90 percent shock avoid and all this because i have these notes here some extra res there as well just a couple points to push down here for this extra little bit of ailment avoidance with some extra life there there's also spell suppression here but then there's also like if you don't want to push down this side of the tree maybe you push up here these nodes have big cold ailment effect up here you have heart of ice this is a bunch of cold but penetration does not affect cold dot increased effect of cold ailments along here with some cold dot multi and then anything that increases spell damage is good you have dot multi right here you can push down into the start area, the spell damage, this is elemental damage, you got area damage, this is damage, like there's a lot of damage right there you could get. Increase the effect of arcane surge even, you can come over here, get all this increased elemental damage. There's a lot of options, right? Um, now you can even push down here, you can get some more curse effect, some more mana reservation efficiency of your curse skills to set you up on the... Scion Life Wheel gets you access to Ash, Frost, and Storm. This is what I chose to anoint because the 30% um, increased effect of non-damaging ailments for the chill effect on top of the 30% elemental damage is huge. And uh, yeah, let's look at the Ascendancy. My first points that I took were the minus 22 Cold Res and minus 22 Chaos Res. Now, as well as nearby enemies have 100% reduced life regeneration rate. This is huge because when you're doing Maven, encounters where she's causing enemies to regenerate life when you're running an occultist if you're close to that enemy they just don't regenerate life it's huge it's really 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 big just having that passively here then you cannot be chilled can't be frozen deal more cold damage and nearby chilled enemies deal 10 percent reduced damage like that's just an insane note here um 
not only is it increasing your damage, lowering enemy damage, can't be chilled, can't be frozen, so you don't have to worry about this Pantheon here to not be frozen. You could do things like take reduced damage over time or other things, however you want to fill out your Pantheon as you need. But then here we have your hexes cannot affect or can affect hexproof enemies. This means that you can run hexproof, any hexproof, like you can actually scale your curses and the game's not going to say, oh, you're using four curses, but none of them do anything to this enemy. Um, so you really kind of need this. I actually wish this hexes could affect hexproof enemies was somewhere up here on the tree rather than being only given to a cultist you're you're really limited on the ability to apply curses to hexproof enemies outside of a cultist so you really can't juice this quite as well on anything but an occultist and then lastly here you get an additional curse from malediction 15 percent increased curse effect and enemies you curse have malediction so they deal 10 percent reduced damage and take 10 percent increased damage so Nearby chilled enemies that are cursed deal 20% reduced damage, take increased damage, chill effect slows enemies a ton, and like you can really learn the mechanics of a lot of bosses when you're applying so much chill effect to them because they're just going to do everything way slower. And that's with me route with no running temp chains. But yeah, and feeble, very unique enemies deal 15% less damage. I don't know how much curse effect I have, but there's there's a lot from here. Uh, there's five. That's 25% curse effect. Here we've got another 10. This master here. Curses on enemies in your chilling areas have 15% increased effect. When you're increasing the effect of four different curses by 15% just because you happen to chill them, that's a lot. Frostbite. 10% of 47 is minus 4.7 cold res. That's just 10% of the curse effect. Elemental weakness, 10% is minus 4.4 cold res. And then despair here. Cursed enemies take 35% increased damage from damage over time effects. 10% of that is I take 3.5% increased damage. So we've got like like close to 50% increased curse effect. So we're getting huge because... Bane applied curses have increased effect. From there, you do the same with blasphemy quality, 10% increased effect of curses. So there's so much. There's it, it's it's pretty insane what you can do. And it's enfeeble with curse effect stacking on an occultist as a strong way to get out of being forced into grace determination in order to survive in the game. Though you do, you're still going to want spell suppression and getting ghost dance is nice. I think I've covered just about everything. Um, what else could I mention here? All right. So there's this helmet here. Uh, Rhyme Gates. This just got buffed to give you 50% cold damage over time multiplier on here. So this helmet, if I were just to sock it in here, I have 160,000 um, cold dot per second before any other scalers here i throw this helmet on it jumps to 203 so it's like 33 percent more damage just from having that helmet so this helmet could go in here um but i'm also getting another 20 percent increase in feeble effect off of this helmet because of the implicits i never got a helmet enchant helmet champ best possibility is vortex cooldown recovery speed because then you're able to just kind of hold down the vortex and then you can chain them together when you're running in a straight line if you have more cooldown recovery. So if I were to just run and hold down vortex, it'd be cool if I could clear the map that way, but you can see them leaving gaps. So if you have more cooldown recovery for vortex, um, that is how you are able to do that. Um, then you really don't need the vault cold snap to be able to just run through the map and start exploding things. You can do it all with Vortex. And I'm getting my fourth curse from a Dodre Stamming. Ideally, I would be using the Windscreen Boots. These give you 50, those give you 50% increased area effect of curse or hex skills or something like that. That is going to increase the AoE of Bane. 
so you can curse more things with that as well as increase the aoe of the blasphemy blasphemy aura so you're going to be able to curse things from just a little bit further out and carcass jack will do the same thing give you a bunch of extra area but then again you're not able to get implicits on unique items so that's why i didn't lean into this route but you can get a decent chunk of energy shield on these as well this one really rolled pretty badly anything else like my flasks here i could be running an onslaught flask i kept the jade and granite because like i have no physical damage reduction like with these two flasks i have solid amount of defenses there without grace when you have grace in the jade flask can just like pop off so hard and then you're kind of forced into the quartz flask not being a raider and if you want to just run through enemies you have to be phasing so this is my source of phasing Extra little bit of spell suppression there, but I was able to get enough on the tree. Like I didn't, I don't even need the five percent here that I have. And yeah, the like the the big expensive thing that I have on this build currently is the all uprising. But honestly, I wasn't even running malevolence, and I was still clearing things. I I had this in here. I had no malevolence. I had no hatred. I was running grace instead. I was clearing T sixteen maps like this instead without this and then you could have like a plus two like cold gems amulet here instead like there's the big takeaway of anything there's a lot of options to do on this there's a lot you can customize the build to your liking maybe you don't want to run around with the frost blink even though frost blink has really nice chill effect quality on here is 20 percent increased effect of cold ailments so you can frost blink into a pack and all this area that's getting hit by your vortex is taking 26 percent increased damage from the bone chill itself because enemies chilled by support skills increased cold damage taken by chill effect when you're hovering over an enemy you can kind of see their name plates and whatnot they die too quickly from the dot, but it, it'll show you the chill effect underneath the enemy. Yeah, here, he had 30% chill effect, so he's taking 30%, the rare enemy is taking 30% increased damage um, from cold dot. So that, that'll stack with your cold snap, your vortex, your creeping frost. Like, I'm not using creeping frost for damage, but you can juice creeping frost to have a lot of extra damage as well. Um... You can also get cold um, cooldown reduction on your belt or shaper boots, but I think I think that kind of covers everything. I have to give this all separated thing back to the person who dropped it. So um, I wanted to give you guys an update. What's next for me? I'm gonna start leveling the cleave build finally this coming Friday. I'm going to join the Team Plus One Gucci Hobo Charity Event. Um, uniques only. Build. I haven't done that in a couple of years and there's no gauntlet this league so um be something else to do for PoE stuff and they're trying to help support um disabled gamers um through that event and as a disabled gamer myself um happy to throw some support to that but that is all I've got for you today um, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss more videos from me. If you like to help support my channel, please consider using the super thanks to the heart icon just below the video or by joining to become a member. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.